For every legendary video game, you have your cheap knockoff trying to make a quick buck. But in this video, we'll be taking a look at seven knockoff JRPGs that are actually really good. Starting with one of my all-time favorites, Tokyo Xanadu. Now, Tokyo Xanadu was originally released in Japan on September 30th, 2015 on the Vita, with its enhanced EX Plus version for PC and PS4 coming west in late 2017, and was developed by Nihon Falcom, known for the Ease and Legend of Heroes series. Now, if you play this game for an hour or less, you can immediately tell that it's heavily inspired by Persona. It takes place in a Japanese high school setting, you travel to a parallel dimension to fight monsters, you have free time to hang out with your friends to grow your bonds with them, and there's uh, a hot spring scene. Gotta make sure you include that. Now, as heavily inspired by the modern Persona games as Tokyo Xanadu is, it's actually really good in its own right. Its combat is action-oriented instead of turn-based and really fluid and fun. The characters are all really likable, if not a little bit cliche. There's a great variety of side activities like arcades and skateboarding, not to mention a soundtrack that goes pretty hard. I've always referred to this game as Persona with ease combat on a much smaller budget, and I think that perfectly summarizes this game. If you haven't played this gem yet, make sure you hop on it. Now for this next game, I think I love it a little bit more than the general public, but I think at the very least it's a good game, and that is Dark Deity. This tactical RPG was the first game released by Sword and Axe LLC, and is clearly inspired by the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblem games. Everything from the battlefield sprites to the way combat animations play out. And in my opinion, I feel like it takes what made those GBA era games great and adds a lot of quality of life features like icons that tell you if your attack will be weak or strong against a particular enemy. I also like how streamlined the gear system is. Essentially, each character only has four weapons through the entirety of the game. However, each has a particular function like high hit percentage, high crit percentage, or just generally more power. I love this because it cuts down on fiddling around in menus and puts the focus on where the game shines brightest, and that is its combat. To me, Dark Deity might have the best collection of maps I've ever seen in a tactical RPG before. The way maps are designed around the objective are so clever, I was constantly blown away. Now admittedly, the game does have two drawbacks worth noting. Overall, the story is kind of weak and there are little to no tutorials, so you kind of have to figure the game out as you go. That said, if you like tactical RPGs, particularly the GBA era Fire Emblem titles, this is a must play. Paper Mario has to be one of the most uniquely charming RPG series of all time. Sadly, however, the last few releases are much less RPG and much more puzzle adventure. Enter Bug Fables. In every way but name, Bug Fables is a complete clone of those first two Paper Mario games. You have 2D characters in environments that pop up as you explore them, turn-based combat with time button presses, witty tongue-in-cheek dialogue, and fantastic music that borderline copies Paper Mario music. And much like other games on this list, it's not just a good imitation, but adds its own unique flair. For example, it has a mechanic called Turn Relay, where you can give a turn of a particular character to another so you can either do something stronger or just improve your strategy. There's also cool abilities that help you explore in the world, like freezing water droplets to create little platforms, or throwing your boomerang to hit objects. The one thing I will say though is it's much more challenging than Paper Mario, so you have to make sure you have the right metals equipped, use good strategies in combat, and maybe a little bit of grinding. That said, if you've been longing for another classic Paper Mario style game, Bug Fables shouldn't be missed. Now, one JRPG series that has probably seen more clones and knockoffs than any other is Pokemon. Monster catching is almost turned into its own subgenre at this point. Now, one game that I reviewed a few years back that is shockingly good is Nexomon Extinction. It's an indie studio's take on the Pokemon formula. Of course, you'll have your starter monster to choose, explore the world, fighting tamers and wild monsters, and catching new monsters. However, Nexomon adds its own twists on all of this. For starters, you can choose between nine different starters instead of the standard three. You won't be collecting badges here, although there is a badge system of sorts. Instead, you'll be hunting down Tyrant Nexomon, and the game is also quite challenging. For example, if you're fighting a Nexomon and you're using the perfect weakness against it, you're not just going to one-shot it, you have to do a couple turns and a couple attacks. Now, obviously, it's on a much smaller budget. However, I think the art style is really beautiful. It's really vibrant and saturated, has really stylized character portraits, and shockingly, it has really good monster designs. Overall, this one really took me by surprise. So if you're a Pokemon fan and want something a little bit more challenging and just different, I would give Nexomon Extinction a try. Now, speaking of franchises that essentially created their own genre, let's talk about Monster Hunter. 
In the game, you hunt monsters for parts, craft better gear using those parts, and then eventually fight tougher monsters. It's a really great formula, and the series has only continued to grow in popularity over the years. And it's also seen plenty of clones and imitators. However, one of the best of these, and my personal favorite, is God Eater. Now, it has the same formula of hunting monsters, taking their parts, and making better equipment. However, it's totally different in quite a few ways. For one, its setting is kind of a post-apocalyptic future. And also, your weapons are kind of the main gimmick of the game where they can transform. Essentially, you have a melee weapon, and then also it can transform into a ranged one. Also, you can use your weapon to essentially eat the monsters called Aragami in this game to get boosts. For me, I think there's something so cool about weapons that transform. I don't know what it is, but it's just one of my favorite mechanics in games. And overall, the combat is much more fast-paced and fluid compared to Monster Hunter. In Monster Hunter, combat can feel a little bit slow and clunky at times, but here with God Eater, it feels more like a traditional action game. And not that anyone really plays these types of games for the story, but admittedly the story is pretty weak here. And lastly, does Monster Hunter have any waifus with designs as good as Alyssa? Um, I don't think so. Wargroove is a freaking awesome strategy game that clearly wears its Advance Wars inspiration on its sleeve. Its general structure is very similar. You have troops with a variety of strengths and weaknesses and abilities, you're trying to capture buildings over the course of a map, it has gorgeous pixel art, and its combat animations look very similar as well. However, Wargroove does its own thing in quite a few ways. For one, it has a totally different setting. Compared to the modern warfare of the Advance Wars games, this has more of a medieval fantasy setting. And outside of the main campaign, there's tons of cool features. For one, you have an arcade mode that takes the same type of combat, but shortens these maps into something a little bit more bite-sized. There's also a puzzle mode where you can only beat it in one turn and you have to get all the moves exactly right. It's kind of a brain teaser and a fun way to get more value out of the game. There's also local and online co-op, and probably the feature that most people would get the most value out of is a map creator. Now you could just make your own maps for fun and play them yourself, but there's also this huge community creating maps kind of in a Mario Maker type of way. Not to mention they released a free DLC campaign. For me, there's tons of value in this game beyond its initial asking price. So if you're tired of waiting for Nintendo to release the Advance Wars remakes and you haven't played Wargrave yet, I would definitely check it out. And for the final game on this list, I want to talk about Valkyria Chronicles. Now you're probably asking yourself, what game did Valkyria Chronicles knock off? Isn't it really unique and doing its own thing? Now this might be one of those Armageddon and Deep Impact situations, as there was a game released six months prior to Valkyria Chronicles that did something very similar. Now, Valkyria Chronicles released in Japan on April 24th, 2008 for the PlayStation 3. However, on October 11th, 2007, a game released on Xbox 360 called Operation Darkness. Now, very similarly, this is a strategy RPG that takes place during World War II, where combat mainly revolves around guns and ranged combat. Here, the enemies are zombie Nazis, yes, really, and your team has werewolves. Now, I feel like this is a situation where the game that took inspirations is way better. Operation Darkness has a really bad camera that can be hard to control and a really steep difficulty curve. Valkyria Chronicles, on the other hand, has a really great camera that's easy to control, and the game can be kind of easy if you know how to exploit scouts. And in my opinion, Valkyria Chronicles also has a way better art style, story, and characters. Operation Darkness has a really forgettable story and mediocre at best art style. And just for a bit of context for whatever this is worth, Operation Darkness right now sits at a 45 on Metacritic, with the PC port of Valkyria Chronicles sitting at an 85. Now, I'm sure most of you have heard of Valkyria Chronicles by now, but if you haven't already, it's an awesome series that you definitely need to check out. Now, speaking of strategy RPGs, if you want to hear about a great one that released recently, definitely check out my review right here for Fire Emblem Engage. And special thanks to Reset Switch and Tyler Kuzava over on Patreon for helping make videos like this possible. If you'd like to support me and get cool perks, consider becoming a patron over on patreon.com slash thegamingshelf. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.